everybody welcome back this week we're going to do something a little bit different all my previous videos have been really geared towards the beginner potter this week we're going to focus on an intermediate students so you intermediate students if you've already mastered how to make a cylinder this is the perfect project to practice on i'm going to be making a double walled vessel one of the many reasons you would make a double walled vessel would be for insulating purposes. I'm making one in hopes that it'll ultimate be, ultimately be a tabletop fireplace. So in this video, I'll be showing you exactly how to throw a double walled vessel. And then I'll also share my progress in making this tabletop fireplace in the weeks to come. We will be testing prototypes and other things and how the porcelain stands up to direct fire. So this should be an exciting project. Notice I even have trouble centering a large amount of clay. I'm using every muscle in my back, I'm using my thighs, my shoulders, my forearms to really maneuver that clay. In the beginning, you saw my arms moving everywhere. You don't see them moving now. I'm centering here like it's a big plate. I'm centering it wide and thick so I have enough clay once I'm centered to pull two cylinders from my centered ball of clay. You'll notice I'm making it flat and pulling it out, but I still have quite a bit of clay here to work with when it comes time for pulling my walls. I'm compressing over and over again. That will eliminate or at least reduce the chance of S cracks later on. Because we will have some joining and some trapped air, I wanna be really, really careful about that. Right now, I'm opening my vessel, and notice that I'm opening it up just like I would if I was making a cylinder, but I'm not going to open it up all the way. I'm only going to open it up so far so I have some room to create another vessel on the outside of this one. Once I've flattened the bottom and made sure that it's compressed really well, then I'll begin to pull the wall of the inside vessel. So that's what I'm doing right now, compressing the bottom, and now I'm beginning to bring up the wall for the inside vessel. Notice that when I bring up the wall, I'm continuing to do it as a volcano shape. We're not ready for this to come out like a trumpet shape. Um, right now, we want to just treat it like it's an individual cylinder I'm making and pay no attention to that outside clay that will ultimately be used for the second wall. Just pulling up the wall now, not creating the shape, just for creating height on the inner wall of my double walled vessel.
beginning to refine my inner cylinder. Um, in a few minutes, once I have that refined, I'm fixing the lip, making sure everything's nice and even. This will help me later on when I go to meet the inner and outer walls. Once I'm sure that my inner wall is exactly the way I want it, then I'll start pulling up my outer wall. Notice I'm paying absolutely no attention to the inner vessel. I'm only concentrating on the outer vessel as I pull that up towards my inner vessel. I'm being sure to keep that lip nice and even, which will be important later on when we go to join the inner and outer wall. Just like making a regular vessel, we need to get rid of that outside clay now so I can pull it up and add some height to the outer wall and have those meet. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm cleaning the excess clay as I go to get it out of the way so it makes it easier for me to pull up this wall to meet the other inner wall. wheel speed. It's important to slow the wheel down when you're pulling up your outside wall. Anytime you come to your lip as you're pulling, you also want to slow your wheel down. An easy thing to remember is the larger the object, the slower the wheel. The smaller the object, the faster the wheel goes. Here, I'm finessing that edge. I'm finessing that edge so it's nice and even, pulling it up as thinly as possible because this is going to be a rather heavy vessel, vessel with trapped air and two walls. So I'm really finessing that outside edge and making sure that I can pull it up as high as possible so when it's time to for the two inner and outer walls to meet, I don't have as much of a struggle. using my rib to get rid of any excess slurry which will make my walls weaker and it will make it harder to join the two edges. It's important to work with as little water as possible when working at this stage. We don't want to have water trapped between the two walls nor do we want a weak outside wall. So removing the slurry with my rib is important in keeping the strength of the clay or porcelain.
here, I begin pushing the outside wall towards the inside wall using my rib. I'm using my rib to make sure I do not use a lot of water. So as I push that outside rim in, I'm pulling the inside rim towards the outside. Notice how both edges are starting to work towards one another and how I use my ribs to guide the clay toward the two lips. So I'm joining the two lips here. Notice how once I get close, I use my the curve of the rib to create a nice entrance to the double walled vessel. I'm also using the rib to compress that edge to make sure that seam between the outer and inner vessel are nice and stuck together, stuck together well. Notice how I keep my rib as clean as possible. And now I'm going to use that trapped air to help me refine my form using my rib and pressure from my hands. Again, I'm really compressing that top lip to make sure the seam between the inner vessel and the outer vessel are nice and connected well. It's like a weld. You want to make sure it's really nice connected because if it isn't, that will pop out during the firing. Finessing, finessing, finessing. That's what I'm doing here. I have a terrible habit of fussing too much, but I think in this instance, it's making my form more interesting. Let's talk about trapped air. I am making a double walled vessel, so I will have trapped air inside here. Trapped air is not what causes something to explode in the kiln. Trapped moisture is what causes something to explode in the kiln. It's not always necessary to put little holes in the object you are making so it won't explode if you've made sure it's dried to completion. Again, I'm using my ribs to help create that form and I'm trimming that excess clay from the bottom. It's important to take that off now because this is going to be a difficult um, object to trim without the uh, top collapsing on me. So I want to get as much clay out of here as possible and do it now while the clay is still plastic and I can wedge it back up and use it again. Finesse, 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 clean the rib, clean the rib, clean the rib. Notice that I use my, my uh, metal rib quite often, and I use that because it glides over the surface, it compresses the clay well, and it allows me to reshape the form without adding a lot of water.
here we are, a double walled form.